Can I hear myself? Can I hear? Can I hear my? Can I hear? Oh, there I am. There I am. Nice. What's happening, boot junkies? Mike Delgadio here, back with another video on home studio setup for voiceover. Ah, oh, we've got something something new for everybody today. So we're going to start a series. Um, I've got a couple of different um, interfaces to review, and we'll review some some different levels of interfaces. And the first one that I have here is the Behringer Euphoria U Dash Euphoria. Euphoria. This is the UMC 204 HD. So this is a two input, very basic entry level um, uh, preamplifier uh, and interface for connecting to your computer. So the Behringer Euphoria UMC 204 HD, we're just going to call this the 204 from this point forward, um, is a two channel input. And that means you can connect two different two microphones at a time. There's also a 404 HD, same functionality. I think it's just got more inputs. Um, ooh, did you hear that? Sorry about, sorry about that clip. Uh, but, so it allows you to do two inputs, or you could do a microphone and a guitar, something like that, if you're, uh, if you're also going to try and record music. On the left-hand side are your two inputs. Oh, I should also say that this is a, um, this is a, uh, a USB-powered device. So you have a USB port on the back of your computer that can supply sufficient power to run this device. There's no separate power cord for it, no separate DC, which means you do have to be careful that your USB system can provide sufficient power. When I first hooked this up to my Mac here, I already had a bunch of USB powered devices on, on my, in my different USB ports and a hub and stuff like that. And I get a message that says it, it's not supplying, it's trying to pull more power than the, than the system can provide. So you do have to be aware of that. You might need to make sure that you've got a powered hub that can supply the power or that your, uh, your USB bus as a whole is supplying sufficient power. Just a point. As soon as I unplugged one of my devices, uh, it was fine. But I, re I do have, I had like 10 USB <laughs> devices plugged in. That was, uh, that was a mistake. So USB power. So one cable from your computer to the, uh, to the desk. Uh, I'm sorry, to the interface. I'm looking at my desk. To, to the interface. On the front, there are two XLR jacks, input one and input two. Now, these can either be dual mono sources. You could, uh, I think you can join them together as a stereo source if you were doing music, if there's something like that. I, I don't know. I, I only ever use microphones. So forgive me if I if I say that wrong, but there is a, uh, there's a stereo to mono switch here that I think allows you to, to sum those two stereo, I think. I could be talking at my butt here. I, I haven't found the the, uh, the the manual for this. I found like a product guide, but I can't find the manual for this for this particular device, which is strange. But that's the you know sometimes that's the way it is. It's sort of self discovery. There's not a lot on this thing, so uh, we take for it. Uh, we're just going to try and muddle our muddle our way through it as best we can. Anyway, for voiceover and for voice work, you're going to need one input. So I have mine plugged into input one. Now, right next to it are the, the very basic settings for your preamp. There are two and they're for channel one and for channel two, they're essentially the same thing. So there's uh, two buttons and a knob and a couple of indicator lights. The first one is uh, line versus instrument. Um, instrument will sometimes have a, uh, a higher input uh, and you can bypass the internal microphone preamp for this. So if you're uh, going from like a, a, a guitar cabinet or something like that and using a, qu a quarter inch tip ring sleeve, uh, Tip sleeve, tip, tip sleeve. Yeah, you just put the, your guitar. You can plug your guitar right into this thing, um, or or you know any other instrument. Or if you want to use the uh, the line level, which is a much lower line level for a microphone, and that will activate the preamps so that it can amplify that signal as needed. So that's that line switch, uh, line versus instrument switch. There's also a pad switch. So if you are recording a very very loud source and you needed to just reduce that sensitivity, maybe get rid of, uh, you're recording a super loud guitar and you wanted to duck down so that maybe you didn't get the, uh, the background noise of the amp or something like that, uh, you could use the pad. And that just, it's just a, essentially turns the gain down uh, and makes it so it's, it's less sensitive. And then finally is the gain knob itself. So as you adjust the gain knob, it gets, the microphone gets quieter or the microphone gets louder up until the point where it would clip. And so you just, normally that's the, those three are just sort of set and forget. 
Now, there are two LEDs for it. One is uh, says SIG, which means that it uh, the preamp is receiving a signal. You're above the, a certain threshold, and so as soon as the signal um, comes in, that light lights up. So if I'm quiet, it goes off. Signal. And then if you're too loud, you will get a clipping. So if I, if I pop the mic, you can see that uh, you get that clipping indicator. So that way, if you're not maybe not using headphones uh, at that particular moment, you at least get a visual indicator, subtle though it may be. You get that clip indicator. Not all, hey, not all interfaces give that. That's actually pretty handy. So channel one and channel two, they do the same thing. It's the, the same setup. And then over on the uh, on the right hand side, you have sort of the uh, uh, the mix and the headphone monitor. Uh, availability. So the there is a headphone jack that allows for zero latency monitoring. So I'm hearing myself exactly at the same time. There's no delay between me talking into the microphone and me hearing it here in my headphones. And you get a separate headphone adjustment knob. So as I turn this headphone adjustment knob, um, I don't uh, affect what's ending up on disk. There is uh, a monitor AB and there's a, a main out so I can adjust the volume uh, to monitors and then I can uh, mix and I I'll be honest I don't know if this mix is between the two but I think it's the the playback and the what you're hearing so you can do a stereo mix let's see is there anything in the manual about the uh, from what I can find online about the mix according to the documentation it's got this a b it says Powerful phones output with level control and monitor AB source select for DJ style queuing. So I guess that allows me to uh, monitor one source that isn't isn't live. I, I'll be honest, I've never used anything like that. I've never needed to use anything like that for my voiceover needs. Uh, but I, I guess it can allow me to monitor two different sources so I can switch back and forth. So if I press that button, I don't hear myself in the headphones. It's probably going to switch over to input two or some other, maybe the MIDI input. And then when I click it, it comes back. But changing this button does not change what's actually going on to disk. And now the mix, if I switch the mix, I can hear myself. And then if I switch it over, switch it over to the other side. So this mix, uh, as I turn that knob, if I turn it all the way to the left, I hear the microphone. And then if I turn it all the way to the right, I don't hear the microphone. So it's to mix in a different source. I don't know if that's input two, or if it's the MIDI input, or if it's the playback from the from the machine, I, I don't know. And then there's the uh, there's the main out that allows it to if I had monitors uh, uh, connected to it. So uh, these type monitors, so these these type monitors, they're not hooked up at the moment to this to this interface, but that you would be able to plug those in to the back. Now, can I do this on the back? There are some more interface. So uh, you can insert uh, an external appliance here. So if you did do something, if you eventually expanded to do something like a, a DBX-286X or an outside processor or a compressor or something like that, you can insert that. You can send these main outs to another piece of gear or out to monitors. And then there are playback monitors left and right. You have the switch for phantom power that allows you to send phantom power to the microphones. And then you have... Uh, uh, controllers, uh, MIDI, MIDI inputs and outputs. So if you're attaching like a, a MIDI keyboard or a, a, another type of MIDI controller, uh, you could connect those. And then finally, the USB for connecting to the computer that allows you to <laughs> get the signal from your voice to the computer. There's also uh, this little thing here, the uh, K uh, with the interface, uh, that little slot there, that's to hook up like a Kensington lock. So you can lock this device to a desk so it doesn't get stolen. That's handy. I, I, I don't see that on all the different devices. Um, but that is a, that's a nice little feature. So you're hearing me now on the, uh, through the CAD E100S. The other thing I'd, I'll do um, so because I think you may be getting background noise from my control room, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the microphone off and turn the preamp all the way up so you can get a sense of the inherent noise of the preamp itself, which I've actually found is very quiet in the headphones. So I'm just going to switch this off. I mean, nothing, 
right? Nothing. You can hear my my air conditioning behind me, the furnace behind me, uh, but otherwise, nothing. That that my that preamp is totally signed. Full. If that game's going full blast, um, you won't have to worry about uh, noise. That's actually pretty impressive for for a device that's seventy nine dollars. Oh, are you kidding me? That's a that's a that's a great that's a great deal. Hooking this up to the computer, I hooked it up to my Mac. It was literally plug and play. I didn't have to do anything. It just showed up as a device. So, for an entry level, this is a this could be a very entry level setup that you have here. This is a great forever mic, a, a vintage CAD E100. Uh, this is a 20 year old mic. You can find these on uh, you can find these on Craigslist. They come up. You can find them on eBay. The vintage ones they generally tend to be a lot less than the uh, current E100s. And as you can hear, it's a great sounding microphone. You can have this one forever, 100 bucks, or you could do something like a Rode NT1A, um, uh, a Behringer. You can match up a Behringer B2 Pro microphone with this one. Um, or you know any any number of microphones. This seems to have plenty of gain for for any of uh, for any of your condenser microphones. Um, between this this microphone and a seventy nine dollar interface, you're good to go. You can really start recording. I I I went into this one with low expectations. A, a, a fellow booth junkie sent this one to me for review, and I went into it with sort of low expectations. But I've been surprisingly uh, impressed with this one. It's uh, it's built like a rock, man. It's got a real metal case. Um, the knobs are all very satisfying to turn. You know, it's got this good tactile feel to it. Everything about it feels really good. So I got nothing bad to say about it. Um, you, you're just starting out and it's uh, you just need a, a mic to connect to the an, an XLR to to your computer. Give it a shot. Give it, uh, it's, it's worth a it's worth <laughs> it's worth a listen to anyway. That's all I have for you today. I hope that helps. Um, let me know if you have any questions about it. I'm only going to have it for another day or so. Uh, it's just a sort of a quick turnaround. I had to, had to get it back to the owner. Uh, but thanks for sending it to me. If you have any equipment that you'd like me to, to review, uh, just reach out to me through YouTube or through Twitter at Booth Junkie, and uh, I'd be happy to work it out with you. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Now, go grab an interface, maybe a used microphone. Go record something amazing.